Around five months ago, I took a look at a game called Ring of Elysium. It's a game developed by Tencent Games, which is a subsidiary of China's largest internet conglomerate. It's hard to appreciate exactly how large Tencent actually is. They already own a stake in Bluehole, the creators of PUBG. So putting money behind Battle Royale games is not something new to them. Now Ring of Elysium offered up something really fun and a bit different to what was around at the time. But it was very similar to PUBG in a lot of respects. But in recent months there have been huge changes to the game and interestingly it's going to be making its way over to Europe pretty soon. When we last played it, it was only available in Asia, so we had to fly VPN Airlines to get there. But since then, the game has now released in the USA. But sadly, the Europe release was delayed, but it's on its way. It's also free to play on Steam, so it's worth bearing that in mind as we watch this video. When I played Ring of Elysium last time, you dive into the game on a glider. You would pick where you want to land and use a glider to work your way down to the ground. Now though, it's completely different and entirely different to how most other BR games are operating as well, at least the big ones. How Ring of Elysium now works is that you've got a map overview and you can pick your spawn point. The map has various spawn locations across the entire surface that you can pick and you can choose the one that you want. But other players can also choose and you can see what other points have been chosen. This means that if you pick a certain town or city, you're going to know how many other players are going to be there before you even get into the game. And that definitely changes up your mentality quite a bit. You can't have two players in the exact same spawn point, but each large city has plenty of different points. So you can definitely find somewhere to start. And if you think it's gonna get a bit hot in one area, then you can switch that spot and go somewhere else. Kind of intriguing really. Not only that, but this time around, you pick a gadget to start with too. This is where things start to get a bit interesting and let me say completely wacky. So you've got three different options when you pick a spawn point. You can choose the gliding pack and this gives you a glider that you can pull out when you're high enough to allow you to glide pretty far distances. And this will definitely help you get to the new zone faster, providing you're on high enough ground to utilize it. And then, I'm being deadly serious, you've got the skiing pack and that gives you a snowboard. So anytime you can pull out a casual snowboard and use it to move faster and you don't have to be on the snow either. So is it really a snowboard? More like a hoverboard I'd say. But then you can just press a key again and you put it away and you start walking again. It's pretty fluid and it works. I also have to add that you can do some mad tricks when you're headed down the ski slope, balling out of control, style points 100. And then the third gadget is the climbing pack and this gives you an ice axe and or a pulley and it lets you use your axe to climb certain cliffs and you can then use your pulley to get up or down zip lines. The idea is that you pick one of these depending on how you want to play and I suppose where you're going to spawn. Perhaps the snowboard or glider wouldn't be as useful if you're at the bottom of a hill when you spawn. It's also worth noting that you can get different starter weapons with each pack. That's right, you get a weapon by default when you join the game. The gliding and skiing pack both come with pistols, but the climbing pack gets a shotgun. To be honest though, weapons are really easy to find early game, so it's a bit of a mute area anyway, to be honest. Moving on, I guess it's worth talking about the map now, because those of you who saw my first video on the game will be thinking, bloody skis, but the map definitely wasn't a snow map last time, and you'd be right. It wasn't, but it is now. This time around, the entire premise of the game is based on the snow, and freezing conditions. The map is not uniform either, so unlike other games, you won't just have a simple circle moving in. Now in Ring of Elysium, it's based on individual squares, so you can have some oddly shaped safe zones that you can move into. The idea, I guess, with this is that certain areas of the map start freezing because of a storm, and you've got to get to the safe area to prevent yourself from freezing. You have a temperature icon on your hood, and if you're in that unsafe zone long enough, the storm will engulf you and you'll start to take damage. I actually quite like this new system because it's a bit more visual and engaging and less boring than a simple circle pushing you inwards. I will say that a lot of the cold zones can take quite a while to move in though and I think that could definitely be sped up to improve the pace of the game. 
And the way the game ends is also very different from other BR titles. At the end, a rescue helicopter comes in and is marked on your map. The idea here is that a cold wave has hit the area and authorities, because they still exist, have evacuated that region. But 99 other people have been stranded and must fight to get the last seats on the chopper. And that's the interesting part. The helicopter has four seats and to get in, you must climb the rope ladder. Of course, if you do that and another player is watching you, then they could easily kill you. Although if they feel kind, they might not and might just climb in with you because more than one person can technically escape and win. This leaves the end game in a weird place though, because you're trying to track down the remaining players, but also be wary of them climbing that ladder. After a while, every remaining player is marked down on the map and the storm brews up, leaving everyone to try and kill each other or climb away to safety. It's certainly different, I'll say that much. We talked about this last time, but the game also has a lot of quality of life touches to it that I think work really well. For instance, you can have multiple scopes on your weapons, so say a long range and a short range, and then you can flick between them with a push of a button really useful, I might add. And on top of that, when you pick items up off the floor, say attachments, they will automatically be equipped onto the right weapon, making your life so much easier. The game also has a neat cover system where you automatically lean, but it does it really well, better than most automatic systems, I think. The game is playable in both first and third person. I couldn't find a first person perspective game, no matter how hard I tried though. I guess that third person seems to be the way with this game it's definitely the most popular game mode by far so that's the good stuff but let's talk about some of the problems that i had with ring of elysium first of all it's not optimized at all frames do suffer in various parts and this is made worse by the poor graphical options available to you this is definitely an area that needs improvement you can set the game in windowed borderless or full screen but even when in full screen my game never actually truly went into full screen and i wasn't able to change my resolution when in full screen either another indicator that it's perhaps not running in a dedicated full screen mode this could be an isolated problem only for me but it was definitely not helping the frame rate there are options for vsync and for first person fov as i mentioned earlier the game does have a first person mode if you can find a game sadly when it comes to advanced graphics options there are few and far between you've got an overall graphics quality option that can be set to either low normal or standard whatever they mean what's normal what's standard doesn't make much sense if i'm honest also the anti-aliasing has a low standard and high so on that basis i guess standard is medium amazingly the final graphics option is render style which you can either set to vibrant or realistic and realistic doesn't look very realistic in my opinion but those are your options and critically not much in the way of mouse options either the key bindings are all there so you can set keys to heal using bandages or med kits you can change your weapon slots or gadget buttons change if you want your aim on a toggle or a hold and you can change your sensitivity for each scope zoom but sadly no mouse acceleration or mouse raw input options here overall wrapping things up the core game is a lot of fun and i think that ring of elysium does a lot of things right when I played it a few months ago, I thought it was quite novel and it had a good chance of being successful if it was bought to the North American and European market. And I still think that, but to a lesser extent now. I think Call of Duty Blackout kind of fits into a similar place as this game and it does do things a lot better, especially when it comes to PC options and configurability. But you've got to remember that the BR mode for Black Ops 4 is included with the main game and for that you're going to have to pay full price. Ring of Elysium is free to play. But you know what, the novel ideas such as picking your spawn and being able to specify a gadget at the beginning of the game are fun and quite interesting, but I think the novelty of that soon wears off for the most part. But in certain instances it does add to the gameplay. I think the map is pretty cool too, there are some cool looking parts to it. And I'm not sure I've mentioned this, but the game has monster trucks. That's right, I thought I'd throw this in at the end here. You can drive a monster truck. If that's not enough for you to try it out, then I don't know what is. The game is fun, and that's what matters, right? But I'm not sure it's fun enough to separate itself from the crowd. Now there's a Call of Duty heavyweight knocking at the door. When it releases in Europe, if they can add some more graphical options and more customizable elements, I think it could be a quite popular game. There's a long way to go though, but at its core, it's definitely fun. And that's all for today, guys. Let me know what you think of Ring of Elysium down in the comments below. Have you played it? Do you like it? Love it? 
let's hear your opinion. Thanks very much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.